Greetings programs, welcome to the grid. I am Sark and today's game is a clay material. Looking at our reference image we're going to use it to cover uh, the base color, uh, this sort of glaze or gloss that causes it to reflect things a bit, uh, and also some of these uh, surface details. So uh, for the base color I'm going to press M and open the material editor. Uh, you can see I've got a number of material slots here. It's the number you have. You can just go to options. I'm actually going to decrease the number. It's just going to improve my my reaction time here on some things. But uh, you can have up to 24 slots. If you need more than that, um, there are tricks for, for dealing with that. But that's that's quite a complex scene. We won't need more than 10, I think, for all of this. Uh, I'm going to take this... Uh, this slot that I had been using. Um, what were we using it for? We were just using it as a reference for the job. Right? And we don't need that anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that out. I'm just going to click where it says standard. And I'm going to choose um, I'm going to choose physical material. That's our physical material there. We're going to use the glazed ceramic that we've got pretty much on everything else. Um, but in this case, it's actually going to be the material we end up using. So I'm going to assign it just to that clay pot. I'm going to take the... We, we see we have the advanced material mode on by default here. I'm going to take the clear coat down to like 0.2. Because um, you can see that it's it's like super glossy. Uh, actually, I'll, t I'll take a render. Um, if I hit F10, I can go to my art render, make sure I reduce it down to a draft quality. We're only worried about color right now, so there's no reason to be rendering at an extremely high resolution or at high fidelity. And, okay, so it's still a gray material, but it's like hyper-reflective compared to everything else. Everything's like a little more glossy, a little more contrast on everything. Uh, the, the highlights are brighter. And that's actually a little overkill for us right now. So we're going to take it down to like 0.2. The uh, next thing we're going to do is choose our base color. So we just need kind of a reddish clay hue. Um, drop the value down. Bring the saturation up a little bit. Somewhere in there. It's probably about right. And if we were going to have any subsurface scattering or... Our scatter color is kind of nice because it's uh, sort of complementary, but not complementary. What do I mean? Tangential. Uh, but we won't be doing that. So I've got our base color. Take our render. These are relatively quick now, so they don't cost us too much. Okay. And for for most purposes, that might be good enough, but there's some more we can do here. One of the things I want to do is is cover the fact that the artist sort of put some horizontal strokes in here, and I think that's reflective of the fact that most uh, most clay pottery, um, at least throughout antiquity and and perhaps even in modern times, uh, for aesthetic reasons, um, or when the artist desires, I guess, uh, you can see that there are grooves, and these come from the artist's fingers working through the clay, right? Um, so there are a lot of uh, techniques for diminishing that effect, but in this case I think we'd like to show it off a little bit. Nothing too crazy. So I'm going to go to our bump channel and I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to set this to noise and I'm actually going to press this show shaded material in viewport for just the noise channel. So this will allow us to work on the noise channel and nothing else. I'm going to hide everything else just to speed up my um, my render process. And now we can start changing these numbers. Like if we bring this down to 1, we can see that that's like super speckled and tiny. It won't really do. If we take the y-axis tiling up to 10, ooh, you know what? Our object doesn't have a UV map, so we need to go to UVW map in the material, or in the, not the material, in the modify panel. And uh, that's a flat map that won't do. How about cylindrical? 
how about align to the x-axis and fit our object okay so now I think um, size may be a factor here let's go back up to like 25 okay so with a size of 25 and a tiling of 10 and our UV map set correctly then we can use object XYZ or we can use explicit map channel we have an explicit map channel we might as well use it so let's use our explicit map channel um, take the size back down to 1 our tiling is still 10 times so we get a very horizontal look and maybe like 0.7 we could use some turbulence. That's pretty wild. Um, let's swap these colors. Is that what I want? I'm trying to trying to figure out like how do we can get these these kind of thing, finger grooves. Um, point three. Point three is obviously way too small. Go back to point seven. I think turbulence might be too much. Fractal might be just right. Like regular is, is too regular and too even. Although it's not bad. Let's just try regular. Let's see what how bad is it if I flip those? Swap them again. I'm gonna leave it this way. Let's see how this looks. So, we can exaggerate the bump effect right now by default. It's at like 0.3. We could set it to like 1. And then see, oh wow, that's that's quite quite exaggerated. Um Let's see how that looks. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's too much. Let's take it back down to Point one. Let's see how this looks. Okay, much more subtle. Point two might be something like the sweet spot. We really don't want to overdo this. This is just to give the impression of some detail, right? And point two maybe almost just overdoes it. So, I don't know, point one five, right? When in doubt, split the difference. I'm going to say I'm pretty happy with that. We can always go and swap these again to see if they look better the other way. No, that just looks kind of blobby. This gives the impression of some... Which way was it? Uh-oh. No. Right? Okay, definitely, definitely the other way. So white on top was what I wanted. And we'll, we'll leave it like that. That gives the impression of some, some horizontal detail. So, that's it for that. Uh, last little bit, like little trick we could do. Of course you could go in and do your own custom map and like paint all your finger grooves in there and, and do like a, a displacement map maybe. But, um... Yeah, a bump map for now for me, I'm happy. Uh, we can go in and do more with our clear coat. So what if our clear coat had noise too, right? But a different kind of noise. Like what if it was more of a, let's use this. Uh, let's take it back up to 25. But let's say, yeah, turbulence, right? And what if it was like, ten levels might be a bit much five levels and you know it's kind of a marbly look to it but now we could get away maybe with noise threshold I don't know I don't want to play around with it too much but we could swap these hmm um, all I'm saying is that now that we've got these sort of details cut through here take this back down to 3. Take this back up to 50? No. 
Perhaps the other way down. Maybe down a... Ooh. Alright, 25, 20. 50 is like way too big. I feel like. Alright, so 25 is kind of a sweet spot. But we can we can raise our overall glaziness, right, without having the reflections so pure and crisp. So we can bring this up to like 0.5 clear coat and take our render. Oh, and of course there's like nothing else in the scene at the moment for it to reflect except the environment. So let's unhide all, and the environment's not even a three-dimensional one. Um, let's take a look at it now. So I'm pretty happy with the irregularity of that. Um, yep, that's it. Good luck. Have fun.